What out, chaps? How's it going? Welcome to the internet's favourite weekly news roundup. Well, I say news. Communist propaganda roundup. The shite you see on the BBC. Coming to you from strangely overcast California today. Looks like the fucking end of the world out there for some reason. I've had a few stories sent to me this week. Some of them are as ridiculous and hilarious as you would expect from the fucking maniacs that run that fucking shit show in South London. Actually, I don't know where Broadcasting House is. I just know that if we had any sense, we would have reduced it to rubble many years ago. Look at this one. (laughs) Do I even need to click on that one? The day I met my troll. (laughs) Oh, it's Gina Miller. And it's the BBC. So, we know what it's going to be about. It's going to be about this probably an actor who now feels terrible And he's extremely apologetic and he's dead nice to Gina Miller because it turns out Gina Gina Miller's not um, a fucking propaganda peddling anti-Britain woke lefty activist. She's a fucking splendid young lady who um, always does the right thing and only tells the truth. For all of us to get back together because I really am worried. Gina Miller's just trying to do damage control because she knows she's a twat. She knows she was going against a democratic mandate. I mean, there, there is no other way to put that. There was a vote, a free and fair vote, your side lost, and then you spent three and a half years trying to fucking vote again. Like, you can call it a people's vote, you can call it fucking Clarissa, but it was you trying to usurp a democratic vote where the working classes said, we know what, we might get fucked all the time, but at least we're equal in the voting booth. And then horrible millionaire arseholes like Gina fucking Miller and a fucking up across chums in the home counties trying to fuck off all the plumbers and the builders and the bricklayers because they think they're more valuable and they know better. Fuck off, Gina. You can you can try and spin it as many ways as you like. You massively took the piss out of the working people. And frankly, you should be lucky. You've been calling us all racist and hateful and misogynistic and fucking xenophobic and illiterate and ill-educated. But we're an extremely civilised people because if this was the good old days, you and your chums would have been pulled apart by a baying mob and then your fucking hands would have been nailed to the fucking doors of parliament. And then everyone would have fucking cheered loudly when you were fucking hung, drawn and quartered. And we know I went for a pint afterwards. So you need to shut the fuck up and accept the fact you're a twat. You made your bed, you lie in it. You can't go on some wondrous propaganda campaign now. Because the last one didn't fucking work, did it? Moving on, this is marvellous. This is from last weekend, apparently. I love, I love the recommendations from the BBC's critics. I say critics, I say propagandists in chief. But like, it says the latest art and culture to comfort and inspire at home. <laughs> These are the BBC's recommendations for what you should be watching, right? Jojo Rabbit. Fair enough, nobody likes a Nazi. But there's not enough Nazis around anymore, is there, for you guys at the BBC? You wish everyone was a Nazi. If, we, if only 1% of the people that the BBC called a Nazi were actual Nazis, we'd be fucking swimming in Nazis. There'd be more Nazis in fucking England than there was in Germany at the height of the Third Reich. Nobody's a Nazi anymore. They lost. Nobody likes the Nazis. Get over it. Never have I ever. Looks fucking awful. But this this caught my eye because it's just so bad. It's like dripping with the shit that we're used to seeing from the BBC. Just look, look at this review. It says, Never have I ever. While it might not get points for originality in terms of theme, Netflix's newest teen comedy, Never Have I Ever, is a refreshing look at the genre. Despite containing many of the tropes of adolescence on screen, the protagonist betrays her lifelong friends in pursuit of a pretty boy whom she won't eventually end up with as she learns the deep value of human connections. This series by Mindy Kaling gets points for finally nailing what diversity should look like. (laughs) So she says, it's not very good, it's not very original, but it's got diversity. Protagonist Devi is of Indian descent. So what? And while being all American, her heritage is very much part of her life without taking centre stage or making her a caricature. She's an insolent teen of her own accord because she's struggling with the loss of her father, not because she's trying to break out of her oppressive culture. And the same treatment is given to the East Asian, black and disabled supported characters. (laughs) Mental. And again, these are the tolerant people. She's there with a little clipboard. Yeah, get me an Indian. Uh, get me an Asian. 
More black. Have some more black over there, please. Oop, and a disabled. Wheel a disabled in. Like, I make jokes of these things. And they write this stuff down like it's beyond parody. The same treatment is given to East Asian black and disabled supporting characters. <laughs> like, just jam them in there. Whoa, whoa, hang on. There's too many people with working legs here. Wheel some disabled in. Fucking, yeah. Drivel. This is this is their film critiques. TV, film and books. Doesn't matter what the plot is like. Doesn't matter if it's unoriginal. Doesn't matter if it's dull. As long as there's plenty of diversity in there, you, sh you should watch it. Fucking mental. This one was a good one. What cor coronavirus? I should never have left China. Yeah. This silly cunt who looks like a fucking... The fucking... Either he's married to a giant or he's a fucking leprechaun. A man who, entered, who returned to the UK to avoid coronavirus said he should never have left China as things returned to normal. Matt Raw from Cheshire said, out of the pot into the fire when he was released from quarantine. He said, China has done everything right, acting more quickly than the UK to restrict the spread. Yeah, by chaining people to fences, <laughs> welding the fucking doors shut to apartment complexes and shooting people if they go outside. Yeah, cheers, Matt. And you, BBC. It's no, it's no coincidence that the BBC's homepage is red. Red China, red BBC. Coincidence? I think not. There were among 83 British passengers flown out of Wuhan. He said, I think the first case was while we were in quarantine in Arrow Park. And I thought, they've seen what happened in China, they'll jump on this straight away. They did nothing. He said, his neighbours were nice, but I would rather be in quarantine over here than in China. I think very definitely coming back here was a mistake. We've made our bed, so we have to lie in it now. Well, there you go. There's the BBC with some nice pro-Chinese propaganda. They didn't kill people. They didn't lie about the numbers. They didn't weld people in the fucking houses. They did a much better job than, than in England. So, thank you, leprechaun and terrifying giant wife, for your contribution to the cause of the chairman, the most high esteemed leader of China and the BBC. Thank you, please. This is fucking brilliant. Sweden's male-only supper club for feminists. Uh, why? Why are you writing about this stuff? Private dinners where men discuss feelings and equality have taken off in Sweden. <laughs> uh, I can't even read it without laughing. Private dinners where men discuss feelings and equality. I mean, can you imagine that? Having a dinner with your mates and it good. All right, lads, how's it going? Not bad. Feelings? Yeah, let's do feelings. I feel depressed. Whoa, whoa. We haven't done equality yet. <laughs> no football and tits. Feelings and equality. The concept isn't without controversy. I'll tell the contro tell you the controversy. The only way you'll get any men in there is if you fucking... If you jab them in there with a spear up the arse. Get in. Get in. Equality. Feelings. Few topics are off limits at the male-only meetings attended by Swedish entrepreneur and environmentalist your hands right lung. The impact of porn, groping in clubs and misogynist banter have already been widely debated. The 33-year-old says the goal is to create an environment in which a handful of men can talk about inequality and patriarchy and how to be a better human being. <laughs> ah, God. God, these men want to talk about inequality and patriarchy. Fuck off, BBC. I don't believe it. This is written by either one of the communist propagandists at the BBC and they just get actors to post the photos. Or these guys are just legends. They're like uh, pickup artists. And they know that if they pretend that they do this shit, they're going to get stacks of clunge. That's all that's about. You know for a fact. They'll be there and she's going to be in there. Maddie Savage, the, the BBC's fucking communist in chief. There she is. A fucking idiot. Maddie... You're off your tits, love. And the second Maddie walks out, they're going to be like, yeah, boys, we're going to get stacks of poo-tang when the BBC put this up. <laughs> Feelings of patriarchy, fuck off. Probably slap Maddie's ass as she leaves the room. <laughs> Jesus fucking wept. This I just want to cover because it leads on from yesterday. Coronavirus, Ecuador victim found alive in hospital mix-up. Right, I was telling you, the numbers are bollocks. We all know the numbers are bollocks. This cunt, oh yeah, he's died of coronavirus. Didn't even fucking die at all. 74-year-old Ecuadorian woman who was declared dead from the coronavirus has been found alive in a case of mistaken identity. <laughs> uh, so this one didn't even die. They've been lying, saying, oh, died of flu, coronavirus. Died of cancer, coronavirus. 
hit by a motorcycle. Coronavirus. This one didn't even fucking die. Where's your mum gone? I think she's gone to the shops. Coronavirus killed her. Yeah, cheers then. Cheers. I'm in a rush, so I'll do one more. PPE designed for women is needed on the front line. Dr. Ag Van Sal's joked about having a small head. There's a concern that standard personal protective equipment, which was often as a unisex design, doesn't always fit women properly. The Department of Health said the kit is designed to protect both genders, but women said even the smaller sizes are too big for some women, who make up 70% of the NHS workforce. Uh, therefore, women need special treatment. Again. So the blacks and the minority ethnics, they need special treatment. They need to all be able to go home and let whitey do all the work. Apparently, their words, not mine. Hey, I was all for equality, but they demand that everyone's different and whitey's got to do all the work. <laughs> and then this one is special treatment for women. I'll tell you what, let's just, let's get all the black minority ethnic, get them off the front line. Let's just get all the women, let's get all them off the front line and let's just get some dirty, horrible, straight white men to do all the fucking work. While the women, we can just have one man on cocktail duty and he just takes them like gin and tonic out the back while they sit on a deck chair and, and read Mills and Boone novels while the dirty, horrible, straight white men do all the fucking work as bastard usual. It's like a modern version of the coal mine. Get the blokes doing all the graft. The women just sit, out the, sit up top and fucking complain. Also, if women are so much smaller and need special fucking gear because they're all little and weak, why can we have uh, six foot three inch male weightlifters with big hairy legs and big hairy cocks beating women in the powerlifting and in the female powerlifting at the Olympics? Seems a bit unfair to me, but again, in the topsy turvy world of BBC, women can be different but the same. Simultaneously, they're definitely different, but they're definitely all the same. That's why that's, they're the same. They've been telling us they're the same for fucking years. So make your minds up, lads. Are they fucking different or are they the same? How come they're the same when we're talking about female Olympic cyclists, but they're different when we're talking about working during a coronavirus outbreak? Weird. Weird, that isn't it? It's almost like you're talking fucking nonsense all the time. <sighs> right, uh, that was comedy gold, some of that. That, I'll, I'll never get over that one. Men like to meet to discuss. Talking about inequality and patriarchy. <laughs> I love it. You lads are absolute pussy slayers. I love the plan. 10 out of 10. I'm sure all four of them are conquer deep seven days a week in purple-haired, morbidly obese cat ladies. They are fucking loving it. Living life large. <laughs> Crazy. What a fucking world we live in. I'll, I'll, BBC, I fucking love the BBC. It is comedy fucking gold. I don't know what I'd do without the BBC. Maybe I shouldn't be asking for it to get defunded. I should be begging for it to keep going. Because it is the funniest fucking thing you will ever read that is not intended to be satire. It's funnier than The Onion. And them come to trying to be funny. Right, that's that for one week. Uh, hopefully it'll be some more hilarity time for next week's episode. <laughs> Cheers.